With this video, we are going to introduce to you our company mission. It's all about creating a common language. And by common language, we mean a common technical language. Well, our clients often present us for different technical designs, which is a result of growing from something ordinary, very simple, to something, well, very complex and sophisticated technique. It's the time and general development which causes this, which is quite natural. However, what also happens is that the design gets more and more esoteric and requires a long training period to get new employees or subcontractors to get introduced to. The risk of mismanagement and unsuccessful operation of any complex device is imminent. If furthermore, different departments in different countries are to work together on various platforms, the need for a common understanding and a common technical language is fundamental. So this video is about how we can achieve this common language. To explain how it works in engineering, let's start in another profession, music. Basically, music notes are quite simple, but they can be put together to express any kind of music, from very simple melody to very complex music for orchestras. Can you imagine an orchestra without music notes? Well, these musicians are clearly looking for a common understanding. Let's give our friends some keys and notes so they can play together, even if they are new in the team. Yes, music keys and notes are the common language for music. It is in fact possible to achieve the same flexible language for technical designs as the musicians have for their music. So how do the different designers and engineers realize that they talk about the same object or system when they use different platforms and different kinds of tools? You know, when several players are to work together, they need a common ground. Here we have a mechanical engineer, an architect, an electrical engineer, a civil engineer, and a software engineer. They work together on a project. The project is complex and they solve different jobs on it. However, some of the objects they work on are in fact the same. So how do they know that it is the same object they are dealing with when they use different tools and different views? This is what we need the common language for. So the first step is to be aware that whatever you're dealing with, it can be regarded as a system. We call this the system awareness level. Let me give you a few examples. A human being is composed of 14 different systems. For example, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the nervous system and the cardiovascular system. Here is another example. A waterworks is composed of eight main systems. For example, the crude water system, the storage system, the filter system and the clean water system. If you display this in a diagram, it will look like this. Well, as you can see, everything is about systems. I haven't made any technical design yet, which cannot be regarded as a system. As a part of our company concept, and that's how we work, we always create a system architecture for our clients in the background as a navigator. When the awareness of system is present, the proven principles of systems engineering can be applied. Perhaps most importantly, the systems engineering discipline provides a synchronization point across multiple engineering disciplines, offering a solution to the most significant problems in the development of smart systems, like common understanding, coordination and reuse of designs. In this synchronization point, you need a way of labeling the systems and their constituents, or addressing them as we say, so you can recognize them and refer to them even across different IT tools and different aspects of engineering. Nicholas Luhmann once said that only complexity can reduce complexity and this is what the next step is about. So to handle the naming in the synchronization point and thereby the complexity of the system we want to refer to, we need another system that can handle this for us. And this is what the reference designation system, often recognized as RDS, based on the ISO IEC 81346 standard series, is about. It's so simple. It works on a piece of paper without IT support, and it works in different kinds of software systems too. So you can get started with RDS without any special tool. 
Later, as you improve, you can implement it in your tools as the RDS is a kind of its own and by default does not conflict with other information in your system that you handle. Let me explain what RDS is about in three steps. Step number one, classes of system objects. This part allows you to distinguish between objects in a collection. We recognize the object by classifying it and give it a class letter code. The letter code helps you to recognize the object instantly. The RDS classification works on several levels, but here are some examples from a technical plant. Here is a motor. It has the class name MAA. Here is a door. It has the class letter code QQC. Here is a window. It has the class code QQA. This is a pump. It has the class code GPA. However, the trick is that also systems are classified. For example, a filter system is classified KC. Step number two is about structure. This is the part that allows you as a designer to create a model of your system design. It's not just a random model of your system, it's based on partial relationships, also called part-off relations. It is used to describe your system by means of systems of systems, which can handle unlimited complexity for you. It would always be a specific model which fits your design only. But since the principle is straightforward and also described in an international standard, most people will be able to read and understand your design very quickly, just like the notes works for musicians. The good news is that most designers and engineers easily grasp the point of this as part of relations are easy to make, easy to navigate within, and easy to maintain. Here we have a small example of structure. Here's a range of components in a worldworks. A pump, in a filter system, and as you can see, the pump is clearly a part of the filter system. The third step is about aspects. This last part enables different views on the structure we just created in the previous step. This is necessary as different parties may need different structures to handle that part of the design. RDS offers three different views called aspects. The functional aspect, recognized by the prefix equal. The product aspect, recognized by the prefix minus. The location aspect recognized by the prefix plus. By use of aspects, you sharpen the world. Aspects, so to say, filters out specific views of the system for you and uses this as a part of the naming convention for the system of interest. You use the prefix signs, that means the equal, the plus and the minus, to read the code in one specific way just like the music keys tell the musicians exactly how to play a specific sheet of music. The functional aspect, the one with the prefix equal, allows you to create a structure which can handle tangible as well as non-tangible objects. This is very practical for functions in a software system, but also for electrical and some mechanical disciplines, as you do not take the physical solution into consideration. The product aspect, with the prefix minus, allows you to create a structure based on the way a system is physically built. Some systems have a preference for this aspect, for example a wall system, where it is more important to view the way it is constructed rather than how it works. The location aspect, with the prefix plus, allows you to create a structure where you can find the object in the real world. For example, you can structure a layout of a plant or of a building this way, or alternatively, you can address if a system is located in another system. When you have these three parts of the RDS, that is the classification, the structure, and the aspects, you combine this into one or more reference designation, which is used to identify the system and its constituents unambiguously. So, now that designers and engineers know that the object is a pump in a filter system, it has a reference designation based on the RDS, which is the common language among them. 
The reference designation is used by all parties. So different models now can show the same object, but in different ways, still keeping track of the same object. So the reference designation is to be read and understood among the different parties in a project. It links the different representations of the same object in different tools together in one synchronization point and thereby establish the common language we were looking for. So this was a video about creating a common technical language. We do that by the means of the reference designation system, which is a complex system, however it's designed to reduce complexity for you. To us, it's all about creating a common language. Are you looking for a way to improve your efficiency? You can improve your efficiency by up to 40% with our concept. To learn more, contact us. Find us at suseng.dk and visit 81346.com for free information and downloads about RDS.